Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about the expected condition in protector. Most of the time, I get this question like why we need the expected condition in protector because we know that protector can handle the angular synchronization and the weights, right? That's true, but not 100% true. Why I'm saying like this is because if I show you this simple application, we have a counter app. Once I click on this increment or decrement or maybe the reset, the value is getting changed dynamically without getting refresh of this actual page. So in most of the Angular terms, um, the pages, whatever the pages we see are mostly like single page application where the page doesn't get reflected most of the time or I mean the refresh doesn't happen most of the time. The internal what are the components we have that is going to get changed. But in certain conditions, this is not the actual scenario. For example, when I click on this increment, this is going to get the, the value of the counter is going to get increment. Of course, we can assert that and protector is going to support this. But there are some external factors. For example, once I click on the simple alert button, the alert is going to appear and we have to accept. But if you noticed, I have clicked the alert and it takes some time to pop up this particular alert. So in this scenario, protector cannot help you directly. So we have to go with the expected conditions, which is again a class from the protector API. We'll talk about the bindings and the difference between the uh, Angular bindings and the expected conditions maybe in some another video. As of now, let us see how to handle this alert using the expected condition. So it's going to be very simple. We are going to load this URL and we are going to click on the select button and we are going to accept this. But if I write the same code, it is going to definitely fail and I'll tell you the reason as well, right? So if I go back to my uh, this particular project and here we have this expected conditions folder. Within this, I have a spec called wait.spec.js and within this, I'm going to write a hit block here. And within this, I'm just going to say like, uh, wait for an alert, then accept. And of course, we are going to use the async and await. And first of all, we are going to load the URL. So that's going to be in this particular link. And then we are going to find this particular button. So here we have a ID called accept, so I can use this. So await, then followed by the dollar symbol to find the CSS value. And we are going to do the click action here. Now, once we do the click, we are expecting alert to appear, right? So here I can say like, uh, await browser dot switch to dot alert and then followed by dot accept, right? So here we are resolving the promise and then we are doing the accept. Now, if I try to run this, it is actually going to fail. Let me show you. So I'm just going to click on this run test. So the browser got launched and it's going to load the URL as well. And then you click on this particular button and here you can see in the right hand side, the test case is actually failed. Now if I open my browser, you can see that we are able to get this alert. So once I click on the alert, it's taking few seconds to load this alert and then only we are going to get this alert. But my script is executing very fast and it is not able to find that alert and it says that no search alert. If you remember in our alert interacts with alert video, you probably know that what this except, exception means and when we get this. If you forgot, please refer to that previous video. So this is the problem in this scenario, of course, we have to handle this kind of alert using the expected condition. So what is expected condition? So let me just try to create an object first. So let EC equal to browser dot expected condition. So expected condition is nothing but a class which has a name called protector expected condition, right? So this is the actual class name, which is uh, given by the uh, protector, right? Now, using this, we have to wait until there is an alert and then we have to do the accept. So how do we do this? Very simple. We have to first call await, then followed by browser dot wait. 
and within the wait function we have to pass the time and what is the condition so if i mouse over on this you can see that it is going to ask me for a condition that should be from your expected condition and then we have to pass the time out how many seconds we want to wait and if you want you can pass an optional message like i am waiting for alert or i am waiting for element to be clickable something like that if you want to give some message then probably you can use that so first we will say like expected condition and here you can see that we have few functions we'll talk about this maybe in some another video uh, with some examples as of now we are interested on this alert is present so if until there is no alert it will wait for the given amount of time if the amount of time is going to exceed then of course it is going to throw us error as timeout so here i'm just going to wait for maybe 5 seconds that is in terms of 5000 milliseconds and then for by i am also going to give an option message saying that waiting for an alert right that's it after that if this condition is going to get satisfied then only this line of this piece of code is going to execute now let us try to execute this then we will talk about it So here you can see that on the left hand side the click action has happened but on the right hand side uh, you can see that we didn't get any exception and you can see that our test case got passed this green guy i mean this green dot means of course the test case is passed right so what happens in this scenario is we have waited until there is any alert if there is an alert present then only this piece of code is going to execute based on this particular time but let's say that uh, we are going to wait for maybe two seconds so 2000 milliseconds and if i try to execute this now you can see that it is actually going to give us timeout exception so the button is clicked and it's going to wait for two seconds and after the two seconds you can see that we are able to get this exception says that fail because wait for an alert and wait timed out 2000 milliseconds so this alert message this option string message will come so whatever the optional message we have passed in this particular location i mean in this uh, within the function that is going to appear if this condition is going to fail so when there's a failure this message will be appearing on our console.log i mean on the console and you can see that wait timed out after 2000 milliseconds so if there is a time and if the time is going to be exit, then of course we will get this as an exception. So that's it, pretty much enough, right? So this is the reason we have to go with the expected conditions and we have few of the functions like we can wait until the button or any of the element is going to be clickable or visibility or invisibility of, and we have few other functions as well. We'll talk about that maybe once we get some application to give you the demo, right? So I hope this makes sense to you and as of now I am using this local host so the entire application is, in on, is on my machine now as of now but definitely when I reach the thousand subscriber uh, I will just I promise you I will make it as public and of course you guys can practice each and everything whatever we have within this right so that's it if you are not part of red code kindly do the subscribe that will make me definitely happy and thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon. I will come up with another examples from, from, from the expected conditions in upcoming videos.